Now, for the last six months, I've been busy converting this uh, Mark 7 Ford Transit minibus, 15 seat minibus, into a camper van. So that's why I've not been shooting or fishing or doing anything like that. I've been busy building this bad boy. So that's the outside. Lovely and clean. And go all the way down this side. At the end of the video, I'll show you uh, loads of uh, sort of build videos and pics um, where I've blacked out the windows and everything. And uh, I'll quickly show you the back, give an insight into what's inside. So, here we go. So, we've got a double bed with a garage area underneath. I'll take you inside in a minute. I've paneled the uh, doors with some little windows. And I've got loads of storage in here now. So I've got my wheel clamp because uh, they tend to get nicked. Um, I've got some uh, seats, camping seats. I've got a chemical toilet there, aluminium table at the back. Uh, I've got a paraffin heater. And everyone's going to moan that we're going to die of carbon monoxide poisoning, but obviously I'll have a window open when I use that. If I've got an electric hookup, I'll use my little oil filled radiator. Uh, I've got the S bucket. I'm not guessing what that's for because um, obviously I don't do number two's in there and if I'm off grid I'd rather do one in, in there and then um, that can be sort of uh, disposed of organically and hygienically. I've uh, got various other bits and bobs there. I've got a tarp which is like an, an awning here. Um, oop. Yeah, here you go. And the idea of that is that will go tied onto those eyelets on the roof. So I don't need to have a an expensive uh, roll-out awning. I'll just tie a sheet to the top of there if I need to. Um, oh, here's my shower. It's just a, a pressure pump. We've got uh, five litres. It gives a seven-minute shower, and the water's about there at the moment. And if you put um, a couple of kettles of uh, boiling water in there, it becomes warm. And then, obviously, you get yourself a shower. So I can hook up a little shower curtain on the inside and then on the outside of the doors and I can have a little shower down here if I need to. Yeah, so that's uh, in the back. Yeah, I'm pleased that's come out. It's been a lot of work. I've put some extra locks on and things. Got rid of the wipers, don't need them. And around this way, there we go. Take me outside crocs off. Got me inside crocs. <laughs> right, and this is my little camper van. Um, I've got a, like an ottoman chest here. Tons of storage in there. Probably keep all bedding in there. Um, and I've got a little uh, three drawer unit there. There's a little stool. A little table. Obviously you can't drive around with them uh, like that because they'll just fall over. But I can move them out of the way when I'm on the move. And I'll show you how I make a bed up here. And this makes like a, a single and a half. And, and there's the board there. Uh, and I'll show you that one set up in just a bit. Um, over here, this was an oak side board. Um, I was going to build a kitchen from scratch. I thought, hang on a minute. Let's buy a quality bit of kit, a bit of furniture and convert it. Um, I know it's heavy, we've got to remember there's no longer um, 15 seats in the back here with 15 passengers so we can actually um, take quite a bit of weight. Um, I've not put it on the way bridge yet, I will do, but I think it's definitely going to be under 3.5 tonne. Um, I've got two gas hobs, grill, a um, couple of wine bottle holders there, 240 volt electric here. Got my little sink here. I want to keep it minimal, I didn't want to worry about having electric pumps. So I've got the old school um, whale foot pump. So you just pump it like that and it gives you water. I've got 25 litres of fresh water in, in the back um, in the underground, under, under bed garage with a 25 litre uh, grey water. Got me swinging mugs. So I like this, it's a bit like when you're on a ship and everything's swinging around. That's quite cool. Uh, storage up there. 
pots and pans and got a curtain rail at the back not got curtains yet but I can actually blank these little windows off and I'll show you how I've done that with some um, one inch well, I think it's 20 mil 20 mil uh, black insulation board but I still will put curtains up at some point as well anyway um, that's my little attack alarm there I've got one there just because we're stealth we not really stealth camping but we're sort of wild camping somewhere off grid and someone's decided to want to attack the van I can I'm gonna set it off now. And then be quiet, that's better. I've got little torches on them as well. So what you can do is you can actually take one off if you want to go and use the facilities, the uh, toilet or whatever, and you've got that on you. Um or in the middle of the night, someone's sort of uh outside attacking the van, you can actually chuck them like grenades. You could chuck one outside and set the other one off inside. And I'm sure anyone that's up to no good is going to want to do a runner. Um, I've got an LED strip all the way along here. That's 240 volt. And that goes into my cabinet here, which is my electric cabinet. I'll show that in a bit. Um, so yeah, so on site, 240, I've got those LEDs around there on a little switch. And oh look, I've got some little spotties as well. They're 240 volt. So I've got one, two, uh, three little spotlights there and I've also got under there one two three I've got some 12 volts as well so I haven't got hook up I've still got a uh, 12 volt lighting and as I was saying in here this is my electrics cupboard and I haven't got ledger batteries I've got another idea um, another little setup I'll show you what I'm gonna be doing um, that's obviously my consumer unit for my uh, 240 with a RCD circuit breaker it's all earthed to the body um, and I'll test it when it's hooked up it's earthed to the actual main supply that's that little uh, LED switch there also I'm in the park at the moment so I can't show you the 240 is working and I've got one little plug socket in there that's quite handy because this little void here that's where my jacket goes I haven't got it with me I forgot to bring it but I'll, when I pop home I'll pop it in there and effectively this little uh, gizmo here, that one is uh, for those LEDs under there. All right, so at the moment, that's my uh, 12 volt power in. It's coming off the auxiliary battery, because I haven't got leisure batteries, I've got an auxiliary battery, and I've got the uh, um, cranking battery on this transit. But obviously you don't want to run it like a leisure battery, but if a little short stops, you can plug that in there. And then if I flick this switch, oh hello, I've got 12.4 volts. And under here, I've got three little LED strips. So that's me off grid. If I was running off the auxiliary battery, well see, I don't want to do that, because that's just going to kill it. So the idea is, oh yeah, turn that off there. That one, that goes straight to my jackery wallet. So when I get the jackery plugged in, I'll plug it in there and you'll see I'll have 12 volts running off the jackery. And also, if I've got hook up, 240, I can actually plug my jackery into here and then that way the jackery can charge off uh, the mains um, or I can run it off the solar panel that I've got as well. Um, so that's pretty much how my electrics are, are gonna be. Some people will criticise and say, oh yeah, just have a leisure set up and all that, but I want to be able to take the um, Jackery camping and I don't want to have it any all the time. So I can take it indoors, it could be fully charged up at home. When I want a weekend away um, or longer, I can just put the Jackery wallet straight in there. Um, likewise, I can, like I say, that's the, the 12 volt coming in from the auxiliary, all right, from the actual, the actual bus. If I turn it on, and I plug the jackery into that, I can even charge the jackery off the um, the alternator, or off the van. All right, so I've got the best of like three worlds, really. 240 hookup, uh, auxiliary 12 volt power, jackery 12 volt power. It's even got an inverter, so you could have uh, 240 off the jackery as well if you wanted to. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, the electric setup and the water setup. Uh, this is just like a little bedside unit, and I thought it's quite pretty, it's quite nice. And I put these little caches on, 
So obviously the doors don't slide out when you're driving along. And uh, dog biscuits, got me cutlery in there and stuff. Um, yeah, they're quite nice. Um, got some toiletries and salt and pepper and bits and bobs. And that's the uh, the dad drawer. It's got all the uh, gives my bits. That's quite handy. Definitely worth getting one of them. I should oops, I'll show you that when I get onto site because uh, when you've got a uh, 240 hookup, do you know what? Don't always trust their earth. And if you haven't um, got a decent hookup earth, guess what? Your van could be live if there's a problem, and then you will become the earth when you step outside. Um, so there's, there's you can put ground spikes in and attach the earth um, to a ground spike. But literally, if I went on site with a 240 hookup and there was no um, earth uh, showing, I wouldn't even use a 240. I wouldn't even chance it with a with a spike, ground spike. Um, this this little cupboard, I haven't really decided what to do with this yet. Um, I've got a little waste bin in there. I've got a oh yeah, I've got a little uh, 240 hob there. So if I'm on a site with 240 hookup. Oh, I will save on my gas and I'll use the campsite electrics. Um, and here I've got my um, gas cabinet with, um, I haven't got a seal around here yet, but we'll do. Um, but it's got a drop out vent at the back, fire extinguisher, and I've got a, just a little uh, backup stove there. Just a little washing uh, up bowl here, we'll do some washing up outside because that's only a little sink in it. And over here, just a bit more storage, pots and pans, kettle, you know. It's Got plenty of storage. And I've still got a fair bit in the back. Probably be able to get a couple of folding bikes in there. And like I say, this is got tons of storage there. I was thinking about putting more cabinets up the top, but at the moment I don't think I need to. I think we've got enough here as it stands. And uh, yeah, lovely. Um, this is a right little bargain. This was. This is a uh, Laura Kylie um, blind, and uh, I got that one. For 99p on eBay, and that was 60 quid new. So that looks quite nice. And um, over this side, uh, I'll black it out later and I'll, and I'll uh, show you what it looks like at night. But um, effectively, I've got it's these little magnets, little magnet hooks. I've just basically got a blackout sheet that I can just attach. Just stick it on there and they'll just cover that up. I thought about doing um, a curtain, I've actually got a void here. I could have a curtain dropping down. But it's quite nice to attach the door and I can slide it back and in and it's no big deal um, setting it up. Oh, my little table. Got an additional little table here. So a little bit of seating area there. Um, it's only gonna be probably me, me, the missus and the little one, my youngest child, because the others are all grown up now. So we've got one, two, three little seats. They can sit and eat on there. And they'll sit and eat on there. Yeah, so that's it. I hope you like it. And um, I'll now attach all the various videos and stuff uh, and pictures of, of my build. Okay, it's night time now, so I'm gonna give you the evening tour. Um, let's just climb in from the cab. Okay, right, so, down the back here, like I said, we've got the LED strip going all the way around, 240 volt, and then the little spotlights, also 240 volt. And then what we can do is, can turn them off here. So that's those ones off. And let's leave these LEDs on here. It's quite nice. And then to turn them off, you can just turn off here. Wow. Okay. Now, like I said about the blackout, these little windows, all they are, just a bit of this uh, poly packing insulation board, 20mm, and then you just pop them in there, 
one that in, they insulate the actual little pane of glass and they complete blackout. So I'm not even sure if I need the curtains. Uh, might help with a bit of heat in the winter, I guess. But uh, I've got them there. I've got to mention them side windows, they do open. So you've got a nice bit of ventilation there as well. And obviously you've got the roof vent. Um, I found these uh, sticky backed LED strip. It did actually come off in a few places. So I've actually masticked it with clear mastic. Oh, you can't really see, but I've masticked it top and bottom all the way around and that ain't coming off. And this is a little uh, bed and a half. Um, it's five foot, five foot five long. Um, it's three foot at that end. It narrows down to about ooh, 14 inches that end. But to be honest, you can lay out on it straight and um, yeah, I think that'd be fine. I've got uh, a curtain that goes up here. So I've got a little uh, eyelet there, another little eyelet there. And that way we can actually uh, screen off the front as well. So completely uh, private in here. And down here, I've got the chemical loop. Porter potty. In case anyone wants a wee in the middle of the night. It just tucks away out there, out of the way. And then over this way, I forgot to mention I've got a two-way fridge. Well, it's not really a fridge, it's a cool box. And it's 240 and um, 12 volt. So I'll just bring it out. So it just plugs in there. Or you can plug in uh, 12 volt or 240. And it's got a fan cooler in the lid. Um, it's quite a nice size actually. So that'd be dead handy. Keep your milk and your butter and your cheese and your meat from going off. And that's pretty much it in there. Now, Jackery. See, that's where the Jackery goes. So I turn off, uh, yeah, I turn them lights off. Oh no, I'll leave one, you can see better then. Okay, so like I say, this is the circuit breaker here. Um, built in with the fuses and everything. So that works well, and RCD, there you go. That works good. Um, little um, single socket there. We need to put one single socket here. That's for the that's for the fridge, and that one is for the what's that one for? for lights. That's the lights, sorry, and that's the fridge. Okay, but I can plug in. That's the, the Jackery um, charger. So if I wanted to, I could plug the Jackery um, in, yeah, input straight into there, and I could charge it off 240. Or alternatively, uh, I'm saying about this little uh, 12 volt plug, that one can plug straight into there, because at the moment that's plugged into the um, van sort of 12 volts, um, but I could plug that straight into there. Or alternatively, if I'm off grid, I can take, take this one out and if I pop that one straight into the jackery turn it on oh hello there we go if I turn them off I've got my 12 volts there all right so once again turn them off on so I can run with 12 volt lights straight off the jackery if I've got no 240 volt hookup and if I don't want to touch um, my van battery and run that flat. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That's my setup. I'm happy with this. Like I said, I could take this if I go tent camping to take it with me. Um, also, if I'm not using the van and it's just sort of parked up, um, I could take this out. I could take the uh, two-way uh, uh, fridge cool box out and I haven't got to worry about having some expensive kit go missing. Uh, I've got the solar panel as well but obviously I'm not going to plug that in and show it to you because it's the middle of the night um, but that's pretty much oh let's turn it off now let's leave it on um, I'm done six months hard work and I'm finally done so now it's Easter springtime I'm gonna go away now and enjoy it
Well, I was thinking about taking up this floor. It's the uh, standard transit floor, but um, it's pretty good actually. I think it's about a nine mil um, MDF board with a really good hardware in, um, like rubberized plastic over the top. Um, it's done really well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave that here and then I'm gonna fix these holes where the seats were all uh, you know, bolted through the floor. And then I will vapor barrier uh, foil bubble wrap over the whole top and then I'm gonna put maybe another nine mil um, over the top of that so all in all my floor should only be uh, 9 18 about 20 mil so it should only be like a 20 mil floor it's only a mid top transit so I don't want to go too high with like a 25 mil um, insulation and then apply over the top so keep this floor down um, sort these holes out bubble wrap for the insulation vapor barrier and then a, a nine mil ply over the whole lot. Um, I've got 33 of these holes to do, but I have found an ingenious way of doing it. I've seen um, other YouTubers that have actually used like coins, 5P pieces and um, epoxy um, or uh, silicon, stuck them in. But I've been waiting for these to come from China, these little grommets and using these and oh look at that lot it's basically a pool noodle and i cut them to the right diameter or depth rather to fit in there and the idea is that i'm going to use black silicon um, mastic to fill the hole and then push the grommet put it around there as well it's got these lovely little blades on it that will uh, take up the um, silicon and then when I push that one, push them down, it gets stuck. But they fit perfectly uh, M8 size. So yeah, they'll be down there. And then I'll use another mastic to go around the whole edge. And then pop my little discs on. So I've got 33 to do. And I'll show you the, uh, the end result. <laughs> 